Hello everyone. In this particular video, we are going to be looking into a basic experiment of the working of Tinkercad. And in this Tinkercad, uh, we are going to be looking into building basic circuit diagrams using breadboard and how to measure the voltage and current using the multimeters available. So this is just to give you a virtual idea about what is happening. So we will look into how these components are being placed over here. Please remember we are not using Arduino and the Tinkercad over here. So no codings will be coming out here. We will just be looking into how to interconnect these particular blocks, how to pick and place them from here and how to make it work. Okay. So, so first we will look into these particular components that are required. I have a 9 volt battery to make sure that I power up this particular circuit over here. And to keep all the components inside, I require a breadboard. After I have that, I have my particular potentiometer over here to make sure that I am able to vary the resistance values. So I have three pins in my particular potentiometer, one connected to the supply, one to the particular changing value and the other one to the ground. And next one is I have two LEDs over here, one green LED and one red LED. You can have any number of LEDs you want, wherever you want, you can place them and so on. I have another resistor to resist the flow of current over here. So for this LED, I have this resistor for the, uh, uh, reducing the flow of current. And for this particular LED over here, I have this particular potentiometer. This uh, potentiometer over here it influences the uh, glowing of these two LEDs. So with this uh, resistance being very minimum, you can see both the LEDs will be on or off at the same time. And when you keep on increasing, uh, keep on decreasing the resistance, you can see that these two will be on. Okay, so we will look into that also. And next, we have three multimeters over here. Three multimeters to measure the voltage and current, and we can even look into uh, summing up the currents together and summing up the voltages together to get the Kirchhoff's current law and the Kirchhoff's voltage law also. So before we look into that, we will see where to get these components from. So first of all, make sure you go into the components and you go into all over here. In this all, first you have this particular resistor over here. So that is the first component that you can pick and place easily. And next one, you have your particular components that is related to my particular battery. You can search over here. And you have your LED which is available over here. When you click on this, you can click it and drag it and place it over here. And after you click that LED, you can change the color depending upon the requirement of your choice. So you put another LED over here and you can change the color. So that is with respect to that. Then you have next your particular component related to battery. So you can click and place this particular battery over here. And you have your breadboard, depending on the size of your components or number of components required, you can use any of these breadboard sizes over here. And uh, next, you will be requiring this multimeter over here. So I have three multimeters over here. These multimeters are uh, an ammeter, voltmeter, and ohmmeter, all three combined together. So this is a multimeter that is able to measure all these three. So you have the A, B, and R readings over here, A for current. A unit of current B for volts and R for resistor. Okay, so all these three can be measured over here. So these are the basic components, and on the top you will be having your potentiometer also. And okay, missed it out somewhere. So you can pay, pick and place that potentiometer also from the top right corner over here. Yeah, there it is the potentiometer. So you can take this potentiometer and place it over here. So all these components are placed over here. And when you are not in start simulation mode, you can add wires just by clicking here and there. So you can connect them with the particular wires. And the top, uh, you can you can see the plus and a minus over here on this particular breadboard. The plus stands for the positive rail or the power supply rail, and the negative stands for the uh, negative rail or the ground rail. Okay. So please remember all of these pins. You can see that when I touch this. The green color line comes on all these three over here, all these, uh, this entire row over here, which means that this entire row in this breadboard is short circuited. So, which means if I place a black color wire over here and over here, it means that now both of them are short, uh, short circuited to each other. Similarly, in this plus over here, if I keep my mouse over here, you can see that the green color line is pointing to this entire row over here, which means that this entire row again is short circuited. So, when it comes to the top, uh, two rows 
and the next two bottom two rows you can see that the rows are shorted together so this and this is shorted to each other but when you come inside the breadboard in into the internal of the breadboard you can see the columns are short circuited so please remember that when it comes to the inner part a b c d e f g h i j you can see that the columns are interconnected over here it is not the rows again which is short circuited over here it is the columns that are short circuited over here so if you purchase a breadboard offline you will you please make sure that you understand this particular concept short circuit is available in columns on the internal part whereas on the outer parts you can see the row is entirely shorted in some breadboards you will be able to notice that uh, on the halfway mark there will be an entire shot over here and there will be an entire shot over here and the right side is entirely independent of that they will be entirely shorted over here and they will be entirely shorted over here keeping this area insulated so which means that no current will be flowing it is there is no short circuit over here with this tinkercad breadboard what they have done is they have made everything short over here but on a practical breadboard there will be a half split over here in which that in this particular region there will be no interconnection between the left and the right side similarly on the top part over here so these are the things that you need to know with respect to a breadboard we have already seen the uh, you know you know about a 9 volt uh, power supply you know what is a multimeter i told you the three readings that you want to take over here led is a light emitting diode diode works on the uh, you know that uh, diode has two terminals the uh, two terminals are cathode and the anode so anode is normally connected to the power supply and cathode is connected to the negative or the lower terminal device it is not always it is connected to ground it is connected to a lower terminal device compared to the anode okay so that is your cathode and anode over here this uh, full form light emitting diode so it works on the principle of diode anode should be given a higher potential then only this device will become forward biased when it is forward biased only you will be able to see the light flowing okay so in a diode it is only going to conduct current when it is forward biased and reverse bias if it is conducting current which means it means that it has broken down okay so these things you will be able you will you can go through with uh, diodes and so on and this led it will it will emit light that is all and it is controlled by this potential meter over here we can look into that now okay so after you have made all these connections over here from the ground to this particular multimeter negative from this positive of this multimeter to the center terminal over here and from this positive terminal to this potential meter and from this terminal to this is the wiper terminal which is used for uh, rotating it over here okay and based on this only the resistance value changes potential meter is for you changing the resistance value over here so this wiper terminal is the one that determines the resistance value here. The one end will be connected to supply and the other one will be connected to the left. Okay. And next one is your particular LED. You have one end connected to the left side and the other one connected to the right side over here. Then similarly, you have your multi, the other multimeter over here. You can measure the current in this region. You can measure the current in this region and you can measure the current in this region over here. Normally, please uh, remember when you are going to measure voltage, you have to keep it across the component. That is the major rule over there. When you are going to measure current, please make sure you place the multimeter through the circuit, not through the component or anywhere. You will have to place it through the circuit. You will have to break the circuit in between and you have to place the meter over there. So that is the difference between a meter and a voltmeter. Okay, so the thing that you need to remember voltmeter is placed across and uh, the particular ammeter is placed through okay so through means through the particular circuit by breaking it and similarly i have my resistor connected over here i have my anode over here connected to the positive rail my cathode to the lower uh, component which is equivalent to the ground over here then again i have my particular another multimeter connected to this particular battery over here okay so now we can uh, when you need to run this particular uh, di diagram uh, please understand you'll have to give this start simulation over here last point in the circuit you uh, colors of the wires always try to use red color wires for the positive rail or positive supply related wires and black color for ground related wires so if anyone is looking into your circuit they will be able to understand which one is the positive and which one is the negative or the ground okay other wires it is your choice you can give any color you want you can but this is not a rule this is just a protocol that it that you need to follow it would be better if you do it like that so now we will start the simulation you can see that i have voltages over here now i can measure it with respect to current 
okay so how much of current is flowing through the circuit i can see it over here so you can see that the total current is 234 milliamps and this because it's in any power supply and what is you can see the 221 plus 13 so which is equal to approximately 234 which is current law you can see the sum of these two it is equal to this value here 234 for the total so this is what is happening over here and you can see that this potentiometer when i keep on varying this value you can see that value keeps on changing over here so this is my for total current you can see that when my potential meter was a minimum value, these two LEDs were off over here. Now, when my potential meter, that is, if my potential meter is at the maximum value. Okay. So, now when I keep on increasing this potential meter value, you can see that my current keeps on increasing over here. Okay. So, which means that my resistor is decreasing. If my resist resistance and current are inversely proportional. So, when my resistance decreases, my current increases. Okay. So that is what is keep on increasing over here and you can see that the light is now beginning it has it is glowing okay so from the minimum when you started providing current you can see the brightness keep on increasing over here and now it has reached its maximum but beyond a particular thing if you give beyond if the resistance is so small what will happen the diode gets damaged okay the, or the led gets damaged over here so you should make sure that there is at least a minimum resistance provided over here and that minimum resistance is what you see in this particular part okay so you can see that this potentiometer is changing over here this is the maximum resistance value and this is the minimum resistance value over here okay. so this is what is happening over here and this is how this led is glowing Similarly, you can change it to different voltage terminals. You can change it to current or whatever you want to measure. You can see that 5.56, 2.12, 3.44, of these two is equal to 5.56. You can design circuits of your own. As I told you earlier, to measure the Kirchhoff's current law, Kirchhoff's voltage law, to make sure that your basic electrical foundation is strong over here. So if you are able to understand the voltage and current, then it will be easy for you to understand how current, how voltage is coming into picture when it comes to building Arduino circuits and in turn building IoT based circuits. Because sensors work on this principle. They convert the particular physical quantity that is a real world quantity into an electrical quantity. And that electrical quantity could be in the form of voltage or it could be current. So you need to understand the voltage and current. I suggest you to play through the circuits we take components that can be used in different ways you can take a particular basic diode also this is the same as this particular led the only difference is it will not emit light that is the only thing so i want you to play through this particular circuit and add components or remove components add multimeters add power supplies and uh, take make sure that you are able to understand the flow of current and the particular potential across the particular circuits at different points so this is the basic that I wanted to give you with respect to this circuit. Thank you so much.